Good Monday morning, everyone. Did you have a great weekend? I'd like to thank Travis Simpkins, the great, great artist who does uh, many of the, the museum uh, portraits and, and things. Uh, and especially those uh, related to the to the to Freemasonry and the Scottish Rite and things like that, uh, for this wonderful portrait. And you can see I've got my little OTO lamb in there and everything else. And uh, I, he sent this to me for a New Year's present, so I just love it. And we're going to get it, Travis. We're going to get it framed professionally. And uh, hung up in uh, my office or Capitol Hill or something. Thank you, Travis. Well, anyway, we are continuing our Enochian Odyssey with Enochian vision magic. Uh, and we talked about the, the ring and we've talked about the lamin and how the lamin is connected to the holy table, which is right there. Also, I posted this this morning. Uh, here's the Tarot of Ceremonial Magic cards. And, and of course, they have uh, Enochian, all the Enochian correspondences that uh, would go with uh, the particular cards. This is the Princess of Swords, so that would be Earth of Air. And there's the Earth of Air, or the Earth subangle of the Air Elemental Tablet, and the R of the Tablet of Union. There's the Tatva symbol for Air of uh, Air of Earth. Earth is a uh, yellow square. And the Tatva symbol for air is a blue circle. But anyway, on the back of each and every one of the Tarot of Ceremonial Magic cards is the Holy Table. And uh, two versions of the Tablet of Union. Now, those of you who are in the know in Enochia know that two versions, two uh, uh, Tablets of unions form the, the black cross of the elemental tablets, but we'll get to that later. But I just wanted to show you the, the holy table that's on the back of each and every one of the tarot cards of the tarot of ceremonial magic. Ah, Monday and I'm plugging away. The Holy Table. This is a little uh, epigram from uh, a working with the angel Il, I-L, April 28th, 1583. Every one of those sides must have 21 characters. But first, at every corner, make a great B. Twenty-one characters on all the sides, but at every corner is a great B or a paw, an Enochian paw. Now I lost my place. Magic tables were nothing new to Renaissance ma magicians. Unlike the protective circle and triangle spirit trap apparatus used by Solomonic magicians, a properly constructed magic table in a room transforms the entire chamber into holy ground. The table itself becomes a holy of holies, the place where upon earth and heaven touch. Drawings of the period show the magician on his knees 
his arms stretched in supplication before a magic table sheltered by a conical tent. Dee was already using a table of practice before Edward Kelly entered the picture. But afterwards, as the elements of the heptarchic magic developed, it became clear that the communicating spirits wanted Dee to customize his table in a most specific manner. The angels wanted the holy table to be an, quote, instrument of conciliation, unquote. Made of sweet wood, uh, we think that's laurel and built two cubits square and two cubits high. The square, the table, and we were not sure what exactly, for sure, what in inches or meters or uh, a cubit is. We have all sorts of, of theories and good theories, good guesses and stuff, but we're not quite sure in, eight, in 1583, or yes, what, uh, what D understood as being a cubit. The table was to stand upon a carpet of silk that was large enough to accommodate the scryer's chair. Now, uh, one of you have, has asked if I have uh, that carpet of silk. Uh, that large of red silk, and yes, I do. And uh, uh, it was expensive, and it was a gift uh, from one of our members of Monday Night Magic class. It was expensive, but it wasn't all that expensive. It wasn't like a gold carpet. And I also have the silk uh, uh, cloth that covers the top with a little uh, uh, dangles on the corner, the little golden tassels on the corner. Once the Sigillum de Ameth, which we'll talk about soon, and the seven ensigns of creation were in position, the holy table was covered by a red silk cloth with gold tassels that hung at the corners. The scrying stone or black mirror was then placed upon the covered sigillum. The public's first view of the holy table, sometimes referred to as the covenant, table of covenant or table of practice, was published in 1659 by Merrick Casabon in his True and Faithful Relation. It was Casabon's image that was reproduced in 1912 in Aleister Crowley's magazine, The Equinox, and numerous other books ever since. It may come as a surprise to many and be highly amusing to others that Casabon's impressively printed image uh, of the Holy Table is perhaps the greatest flaw in his liberally flawed and ill-titled True and Faithful Relation, one look at the description of the drawings in Dee's Quinti Libri Mysteriorum Appendix reveals that the 84 letters that form the border of the Holy Table and the 12 letters that fill the 3 by 4 center square the three by four center square those images are, are printed in backward order figures 16 and 19 illustrate the correct arrangement of the letters of the holy table and here is Beautiful, beautiful, corrected holy table provided by our dear friend and collaborator in this work, Clay Holden of the John D. Publishing Project. 
and let me find figure 19 if I can oh yeah figure 19 is the holy table uh, that uh, I put together that showed the English equivalent to the letters and their pronunciation in uh, in the angelic pronunciation of those uh, letters. Okay, the holy table and lamin are inextricably linked. By wearing the lamin, the magician is linked or conciliated to the holy table. The object that forms this magical link and serves as a common denominator between the holy table and the lamin is that same 12 by 7 table that was used to construct the lamin and the same table that bore the names of seven planetary kings and seven planetary uh, princes of the heptarchic hierarchy. Now somewhere, oh, Constance took the trash out this morning. But anyway. Remember that 7 by 12 square. Right there. That helped uh, create the lamin. Now remember they had the princes and the kings going from right to left. And they weren't matched up by their planet. The king of, of uh, the sun there is matched up with the prince of Venus. It just was out of whack. It was perfect, but it was out of whack. Now, uh, even though I said that the holy table was uh, based on that uh, square, 12 by 7 square that made up the lamin, I wasn't entirely, let's see if I, yeah, I wasn't entirely accurate when I said that. Recall that when we were discussing the 12 by 7 table in the previous chapter, something appeared out of whack. The names of the planetary kings did not share the same lines as their planetary counterpart, Prince. As example, the Sun King, Babagel is set on the same line with the Venus Prince, Bornogo. Instead of his son, Prince, Belfafes. This planetary mismatch in the 12 by 7 tables construction did not appear to bother the angels. And indeed, the flaw seemed to be a vital characteristic of the Lamet. As you can see in figure 17, it, that's now, I'll show you figure 17. Note that the, their names are read from left to right, as if on the other side of a mirror. And the, the planetary king and the planetary prince match. Can you see what happened between the out of whack perfection on this side of the table of scrying when the magician sits down and the perfectly in whack holy table that was created uh, out of perfection. It's like looking into a mirror at your perfected self. Okay. Uh, as you can see, figure 17, the version of the 12 by 7 table, that's the key to the holy table, corrects the imbalance by rearranging the names of the planetary kings to match those of the princes of the same planet. 
Furthermore, the table is reversed, so that the kings now occupy the left side of the table, the princes the right. And the direction in which the names are read is reversed to read from left to right. In my mind, the differences between the two 12 by 7 tables demonstrate a fundamental fact of life. The fact that even though human beings are an integral part of the hierarchy of spiritual beings, we currently find ourselves on earth, trapped in a tomb of matter. And to all appearances separated from the greater realities of the spiritual heavens. And that's separated in appearance. Kabbalists tell us that we are created in the image of deity, that we are, in the truest sense, a little reflection, a microcosm of the great intelligence and creative force that creates, sustains, and destroys all things in the universe, the macrocosm. As Hermes Trismegistus said, as above, so below. That's all fine and good. And as I go about my magical business as if it were true. But honestly, even though I'm composed of the same material that makes up the sun and the moon and the stars and angels and archangels and the supreme deity, even though I'm striving for self-awareness and I do my best, to be a divine, creative individual, still, I don't feel much like the macrocosmic deity. Compared to the macrocosm, my microcosm is way out of whack. My life is one of stress and an imbalance. From where I stand, there's a very big break between deities above and Lon Milo Duquette's below. I'm like the 12 by 7 table from which the lamin is created. I've got all the condensed components of a perfectly tuned universe in me, but they are out of sync. Just enough to keep me from actually being the perfect reflection of the big way things are. I can really identify with the way that the lamin is constructed. Like it, my hierarchy of planets is mismatched and unbalanced. Take one look at my astrological chart if you don't believe it. Like the curious inconsistencies that characterize how the individual letters are transferred from the 12 by 7 table to the lamin, my individual components are a litany of curious inconsistencies. The 12 by 7 table that make up the holy table, on the other hand, sets this all straight. It is like the macrocosm showing the microcosm how it's done. As I sit before the holy table with a lamin over my heart, I can almost feel the holy table's order and perfection pulling magnetically at my heart through the lamin connecting me by an almost tangible electrical current to the Holy of Holies, pulling my heart and my attention toward the sacred spot in my living room temple where heaven touches earth. The holy table is indeed an instrument of conciliation, an instrument of reunion. The 12 letters of the 
excuse me, the letters of the 12 by 7 table are transferred to the holy table in the following manner. First, to make things a little easier, let's turn the 12 by 7 table on its end. Now, if you'll look at those letters there, top edge, left edge, bottom edge, right edge. Those would be letters circling the perimeter. The border of the holy table is segmented into 21 cells per side. Per angelic instruction, the sacred letter B, or a pa, is placed in the four corners. Then the letters of the 12 by 7 table are inserted in the remaining cells, as indicated by the four sets of arrows in figure uh, 18. The 3 by 4 square in the center of the holy table is extracted from the central heart of the 12 by 7 table. Okay. Now, do you see the right in the heart of that table is a square three by twelve or three by four, which is that square. The arrows around the edge of figure nineteen show that the letters are arranged to generate a counterclockwise whirl. In the ritual of preparation of chapter 1, I chant seven rounds of the perimeter letters in order using the angelic pronunciation. I also do the same for the 12 letters in the center square. By doing so, I effectively activate the holy table and the objects that sit upon it, including the sigil Siglum de Ameth, the Ensigns of Creation, and the Scrying Mirror. The chant affects a powerful shift in consciousness, unlike anything I've experienced before in magical practice. As the manifest universe is evolving, is the evolving in product of the dynamic forces that created it, so too the Holy Table manifests on Earth as a perfect miniature working model of the heavenly matrix. It is a magical machine with many moving parts, all in perpetual motion. Picture in your artist magician's mind how like the stars in the rotating arms of a spiral galaxy the 84 angelic letters that form the border of the holy table circumscribe the other objects in the table with an eternal counterclockwise movement around the outside of the table's hexagram, the symbol of the macrocosm. Within the 12 angelic letters in the 3 by 4 square in the center of the holy table's hexagram churn with dynamics of up, down, right, left movement suggested by its four rows of three letters networked with three columns of four letters. See, you don't get sound effects in the book. You only get them here. The lamin is born in the same, of the same alphanumeric code. Uh, excuse, I'll start over. The lamin is born of the same alphanumeric codes as the holy table, but its construction is flawed by a slight imbalance. So too, the magician in his or her present state is seemingly, is the seemingly flawed macrocosmic reflection of the deity. By wearing the lamin, the imperfect magician is linked to the perfection of the holy table, and while this in this exalted state may become privy to the secrets 
of the macrocosmic universe. And that is the end of chapter 9, the holy table. Now, look at this holy table. It's made out of foam board. I just got went down to Staples and got some foam board. And then at Staples, I also made just Xerox copies. Just Xerox copies of a of my own of my own drawing. And then I blew them up, enlarged them cut them out, put them on my foam board holy table. And on the back of the holy table, because the holy table sits on, uh, there we go, sits on four uh, Sigillum Dea meths to insulate it from the floor. I just Xeroxed off or copied, photocopied four Sigillum Dea meths and just glued them to the back of my foam board. Now, I've got the entire elemental tablets and everything else also on foam board. And I colored them in myself and things like that. But I'm just doing this to show you that you don't need a huge, elaborately uh, decorated holy table to work Enochian magic or to e even understand what it is that you are working with. Most anything will work. When I travel, this is my hotel room holy table. Not only that, but when I travel, the court cards are my portable elemental tablets of the system too. So, even though I've been very lucky in, to have very generous friends over the last 30, 40 years uh, who have, have seen fit to generously donate me a beautiful, beautiful uh, holy table, which you can see in videos all over the, all over the place, uh, the real magic is in you. And like I said about the magic ring, if you can't make a holy table out of paper, you won't be able to make a holy table out of sweet wood. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow, Tuesday. Continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. It's been a busy morning. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.